Hello YouTube and welcome to another Splunk tutorial. So in this video we're gonna actually continue our series about Splunk. So on the previous videos I showed you how to install Splunk on a Ubuntu server, how to configure it and we even configured in order to receive uh, actually logs from Cisco ASA. Okay. But in this video, I'll show you how to monitor Active Directory with Splunk. So, are you ready? Let's get started. So, in order to monitor actually uh, Active Directory events, there are some settings that you must configure both on the domain controller of the Active Directory and also on the Splunk server. Okay. So. In order to configure actually monitoring for Active Directory, you have to download what we call Splunk Forwarder or Splunk Universal Forwarder. Okay, so actually, you go to Google and you type download Splunk Forwarder, and first link actually will give you access to download the Splunk Forwarder Universal Forwarder. So, of course, you have to sign in, the sign up is actually free. Okay. So the latest version is 9.2.0.1 as you can see here, okay? So me, I already downloaded this uh, Splunk uh, forwarder and here it is. Here I'm using older version but it doesn't matter because also my Splunk server is actually older, okay? But the same process will exist whatever version you want, okay? <coughs> So after downloading here this executable, we have to execute it on the domain controller, okay? So let's run it and see what we get. So I guess the uh, installation process is uh, pretty simple. It's couple of next, next, and we will see that actually. So here we go, this is the first window. So as you can see here, we have to check the box to accept the license agreement in order to get the next button enabled. Here we go, and we keep with the default. See here we are installing it on uh, because we want to use it here. Use the universal forwarder with enterprise Splunk enterprise instance. Okay, that that what we get because we have installed our Splunk enterprise on Windows or actually Linux server. But you can also forward actually logs or events to Splunk on the cloud. But here we will forward it to our Ubuntu server in which we have installed Splunk. So I will go next here. Here we go. And here we have to actually provide some credentials. So I will type as username admin and I will type also a password. Here we go, it's pretty easy. So here it's asking me for deployment server, which I don't have, so all I have to do is to go next. And here, this is very important, here we have to go for the receiving indexer, which is actually our Splunk uh, server. So the IP address of the server, or actually the Ubuntu server, where I have installed Splunk is 192.168. That one, that three, and also I'll keep with the default one TCP port, which is 9997. Then I will go next and I will install. Okay, now as you can see, the Universal Forwarder has been installed successfully. So I will hit finish. And actually, if my memory is good, it's been installed on program files. So in the system uh, partition, C program files, Splunk Universal Forwarder. And this is our executable inside the bin directory. So as you can see here, this is our Splunk executable. Okay. So, in order to forward the events to 
actually our Splunk server, we have to configure something in this Splunk universal forwarder. So we have to go to the etc directory, apps, then search. And inside this directory, you will find two folders, default and metadata. So you have to create another one called uh, local. Okay. And inside it, I will create a file called actually inputs, but the extension must be conf and not txt. Okay. Here we go. So this is our file, and here we have to paste some directions. So the first line is what we call a uh, stanza. So here we add in a monitor to our uh, host name here because this domain control has as a host name SRV W2K19. We can verify that if I click here on this computer properties. So you can see the computer name and the full name with the domain name actually, which is aminos.local. So this is our domain and this is the name of our domain controller. So here all you have to do is to add this directions. Target DC is also the full name of the domain controller. Disable equal to false. And here the index. So here you have to choose the index that you also must configure on the Splunk server. So you can give your index whatever name you want, okay? So for example, let me call it uh, Windows or just Active Directory Index, okay? It's just simple. This is very important because in this index, all the event actually will be actually uh, forwarded, okay? So remember this name, it's very important. So I will save my file. So now everything is okay on the actually domain controller. All we have to do now is to start our Splunk service. So in order to install it, as I told you, it's located on this bin directory. Splunk is located in the bin directory. So all I have to do is to copy this path and I will run CMD as admin. So right click on it, run as administrator and I will cd into the bin directory actually. Change directory to this bin directory, okay. And in order to run Splunk, it's pretty easy, Splunk uh, start. You can see how easy it is. And I will run this command. So the Splunk daemon is already running, okay? So in this case, if it's already running, it's good to, to restart it, actually. Because a restart will mean to stop it and run it once again, okay? Okay, and this is the output that you must have in order to confirm that Splunk forwarder is actually started. So you can see here it has started and the PID to the process ID is 7104. So now everything is okay on our domain controller. So let's go now to our Splunk server and configure also something. So I will open here our Splunk uh, interface. So I will go to the settings and I will go actually to forwarding and receiving, okay? In order to configure receiving because remember we configured our universal forwarder to forward to the Splunk server on port 9997. So I have to configure it also here. So I will click on this configure receiving and new receiving port. And as I told you, we have used the default one, which is 997. So I will just enter it here. 
three nines and one seven and I will save that okay so now everything is okay one last thing as I told you we have also to configure the index so remember the index that we have configured on our uh, domain controller so the index actually was AD index so let me show you once again this index here okay so AD index so let's just copy it and paste it to the server so we don't have a mistype in here so for configuring the index it's also pretty simple you go to settings and here is menu for indexes and all you have to do is to add your index name here so I will check or click this button here new index and I will paste the name and you can keep the defaults here doesn't matter because most of them are just optional so I will save that and you have to configure it it's been added so as you can see here it's been added okay so now I guess everything is okay so let's uh, do something on the domain controller and try to see if we get something here so till now as you can see here in this column event count there is nothing okay so I will go to my domain controller I will open here I will just add user for example in this domain I mean that local so I will add user for example let's add user called Juliet like Romeo and Juliet okay Juliet next I will just keep this options here user cannot change password and password never expires and I will configure here just simple password just for testing and objective now is to get this event of creating a user on our Splunk server so as you can see here Juliet has been added to the users organizational unit and let's go back to our Splunk and try to refresh this page to see if we get some events and here we go as you can see here for the index or add the Active Directory index before it was zero event count now we have 276 so now let's search for our uh, Juliet user and see what we get so I will go to search and report in and this is one of the main reason we have chosen to use the index ED because we can filter with it so I will just filter or index equal to uh, ED index so you can see here Splunk is uh, intelligent to give us all the indexes that we can choose from and this is our index that we have configured manually so I'll choose this index here and I can get the results if I click on this search here so you can see here all the events that are on this index actually and you can see clearly that the domain or domain controller name is the one that we have here okay and we can search for our Juliet Juliet here we go we have all the events corresponding to user Juliet okay so for example here if I click on this show all 36 lines we get our events so actually the event of actually adding user is an update as you can see here add monitor event type is an update because we have actually added a Juliet okay and this is it you can use whatever if you know actually the event IDs you can also use them in order to catch some special active directory events okay 
So that's it. You can see how easy it is to use actually universal forwarder in Active Directory in order to monitor all the events that happens on Active Directory using Splunk. So that was just a brief video to show you how to monitor Active Directory with Splunk. As always, I hope it has been informative for you and I want to thank you for viewing. Bye-bye.